We wake up at 4,300 meters at minus 10 degrees in the middle of a steam bath. This is a proper skincare. You know what you do before pimple popping? In this episode, we explore the Chilean Altiplano and find out if a sprinter van and us can handle altitudes of over 5,000 meters. Good morning. Seven o'clock, five minutes before sunrise. I'm quickly repacking my photo backpack to have the 200 to 500 readily available here because uh, we have yesterday arrived at the Salado Huasco and with it the Ruta Andina, the uh, small road that, um, that traverses through the Chilean Altiplano and along the Bolivian border. And uh, all through the night we already heard it. There's lots of flamingos in the Salar behind us and sunrise should be in, I don't know, two, three, four, five minutes right behind those mountains there. So uh, let's take a look if we can get some photos of, uh, of flamingos in sunrise. Uh, should we have a quick coffee? Yeah, be quick because I think Sorry. the sun is coming. Let's check this out. Oh wow, it looks like the lake is frozen, eh? I don't know. Do you think they're gonna fly away if we go closer? It's the first time that you're in front of the camera and I'm holding the camera and it's weird. And it's probably gonna be out of focus a thousand times. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sunrise is there. And the flamingos are there. So we would have to walk around if we want some sun rays behind them. But look, there's some moving. I think they're moving, eh? They're moving to the left. As if they heard it. Okay, okay, we're getting there. We're getting to the nice light. Take some nice photos of us. Okay. The other problem is that it's something like minus five degrees. Yeah. <laughs> With a coffee in my hand and being the incredibly experienced wildlife photographer that I am, <clears throat> what could possibly go wrong? And I think Vincent got all the flamingos away. <laughs> well, that was uh, obviously either too fast or too close or too high up or too loud, I don't know. Seasoned nature photographers would probably be like, what's such an idiot? There, there's the, the basics of cameras and all, having an understanding of aesthetics. Um, but the rest of it is really about learning and understanding the topic that you're shooting. It would have been quite a beautiful photo with the flamingos there in the steam. Babes. Yeah. That's how it is. That's how we learn. There will be plenty of salas and I'm I'm quite optimistic the next time uh, with approaching a little slower, mm -hmm. that should work out. For sure. And at least now we'll get our breakfast a little earlier than expected. Even the puma in Patagonia National Park let us approach closer than these damn flamingos. <laughs> right, let's have breakfast. We don't have flamingos for sunrise, but we have, we have a nice breakfast view at least. How cold do you think it is outside? I have no idea. I would guess something like minus five, minus six. But uh, if you give me the keys, I can check with the car. Oh. Catch. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, minus seven and a half outside. Oh, great. <sighs> Ooh, there you go. Thanks, babe. Special effects. Are they coming back? The flamingos? I heard them. Oh, Elena, you wouldn't believe how many flamingos there are actually in the far distance. If you zoom in, you're gonna see them laughing at your face. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it from here. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> uh, today, we are gonna do our first 5,000 meter mountain pass with Frida. Mm -hmm. This car. Let's see if she makes it. Yep. And if we make it. Because then we're going to do our first little acclimatization hike, over 5,300, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's high. I remember last time we were this high, you carried my big backpack over 5,300 meter pass, True. but like a backpack with 10 days of food and tent and everything because I got sick and this woman carried it all over for me. Yep, yep, yep. This is the Chilean Altiplano at over 4,000 meters. Yesterday, we were at sea level, stocking up on fuel and water before ascending almost 4,000 meters to our camp at the Salar de Huasco in this morning's flamingo disaster. We are feeling 
extra diesel because we are on our way to the Antipleno and on the route we're gonna take there won't be any Copac in the next 800 kilometers so better to stock up also extra water because <laughs> we're on the desert <laughs> all right let's go 4,000 meters up let's do it oh I'm gonna have to change <laughs> yeah. it's so nice and summery here and I can wear my wedding dress <laughs> I know it's gonna be cold but okay bye Next to the gas station, we run into the abandoned mining town of Humberstone. The settlement was founded in 1872, when the saltpeter deposits here were of huge economic importance for fertilizers and explosives. With the invention of industrial-scale ammoniac synthesis, Humberstone was abandoned and fell into decay. Today, it's accessible to the public and feels like a Wild West or Tarantino movie set. Impossible not to take some photos while exploring around. And then we finally ascend to over 4,000 meters and into the high Andes. Our plan is to drive the Ruta Andina, a small backcountry road traversing the Chilean Altiplano along the remote Bolivian border. Mercedes states safe operation of the engine up to 2,500 meters. Our route on the Ruta Andina from here on north comfortably stays above 4,000 meters for the next 500 kilometers through the absolute nowhere. For vast stretches, the route is a rocky one-lane track. It briefly drops to 3,800 meters twice, but makes up for it with a mountain pass of over 5,000 meters. Will our car handle the thin air? We have no idea, but we'll for sure find out. Now it starts the way up to the pass. We're currently at 4,100 meters, 4,110. So uh, at these altitudes, um, you really drive the car full power. It's crazy. We are on the way from this morning's Salá de Huasco to Salá de Surie. At about 4,700 meters, we run into the first snow, and we have no idea if the pass is actually doable for us. Uh, it's not just us humans that are uh, getting dizzy and, um, and, and, and weak, but it's also the car that lacks oxygen too. Uh, Machines also have feelings. Yeah. 97, 98, 99, 5,000. Ah. Frida! 5,000 meters. Ah. And then we reach Salah de Surya. It is late evening when we arrive at the Salah at 4,300 meters and the sun is about to set. Illuminated by the last rays of sun, the flamingos cast a long shadow and reflect a warm halo onto the surface below them, which makes for an incredible sight to see. There's picunias running in the foreground, 10,000 flamingos in the background. One of our very good friends from Patagonia gave us coordinates of a hot spring right next to the Chilean-Bolivian borderline. There is no border crossing here, but there seems to be tracks continuing into Bolivia. So it's in seven kilometers bis zur bolivianischen Grenze here, and uh, this Gegend is as no-go eingestuft. But when we mal these tracks here folgen, then sieht man doch ganz gut, dass die hier irgendwie ins bolivianische Hinterland führen. The Chilean-Bolivian borders have been closed since the start of the pandemic. And now we're here, a stone throw away from where we want to get to in Bolivia, but we can't get there. But right now, that does not matter, because we have a hot spring to attend to. Oh, the light is also so majestic. Arriving in this light is always yeah. Look at that, it's like steaming, steaming hot. I mean, not that it needs to be that hot to steam here, but it's my like street <laughs> <laughs> Here, it's nature, that's how it is. 
Good morning. My poor boy didn't sleep well tonight. No. I don't know what's happening. I mean, looking at this view, I should sleep like a baby. Yeah, but the altitude is a bitch. It's a total bitch, but we've been up here for so long, it just doesn't get better. Yeah, it's weird. When we went on the thermal waters in Argentina, I think it was the first time I went to thermal waters. I was researching afterwards on Wikipedia about thermal waters, and then fucking Wikipedia suggested for me to research an amoeba that lives in hot springs all over the world. Like, it's very rare, but it's, it could be anywhere. And if you get the water in your nose or mouth, the amoeba goes to your brain and eats your brain in five days and you have 98% chance of dying. You know, I woke up in the middle of the night with a nightmare that I had the amoeba eating my brain. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. It's terrible. I wish I didn't read that. Well, I guess in five days we'll find out, my love. Yeah, it's terrible. Like and subscribe to the channel to find out if Elena survives. <laughs> <laughs> Up there, this mountain would be our 5,000 plus acclimatization hike. But we got the weather forecast in the satellite and it says 140 kilometer winds, right? Mm -hmm. Wind gusts. Way too much up there. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe hot springs. It's nice. I have to say, that's a relaxed way to wake up. Mm -hmm. As regular viewers will know, the last two months haven't been too easy for us with all those time, money and energy consuming repairs with the car, which at some point made us doubt if traveling with the car is actually the way to go if you spend more time dealing with repairs than actually out there. We're grateful to be able to make good use of our time again, to experience moments the brain considers worth memorizing and thus in a year from now or in 10 years or in 50 years when we're grey and old by a fireplace somewhere be like Hey babe, do you remember when we camped by the hot spring at the edge of the Salah, high up in the Andes, in the middle of nowhere, and you were terribly afraid of some weird amoeba that eats your brain? And you'll say, yeah, how could I ever forget?